All right, introducing Debbie Waldeck, who's called the Professor of Hope, Health and Happiness, but I like to call her Dr. Truth. Debbie teaches you the sign language of your body and has been at the forefront of preventative health and, for, and health education, rather, for nearly 25 years. Inspired by her own diagnosis with an autoimmune disease and the subsequent effects of the medication on her own unborn child. Debbie's child was impacted by the medication and suffered seven years, during which time Debbie invested over 10,000 hours looking for the answers. Rather than a child who would spend a lifetime on medication, Debbie uncovered key common denominators of imbalance within the body that contribute to most or all diagnosis today. After helping her child, Debbie has helped thousands of others, publishing three books and traveling through Canada, Australia, and the United States, sharing a message of hope and clarity. Welcome, Debbie, to the stage. Thank you so much, Bettina. And what an honor to follow such great speakers. And, you know, it's, it's always interesting that though we're constantly speaking at these summits about empowerment, there seems to be a theme that, that just happens organically. Uh, the, you know, you've had speakers today speaking about the difference between confidence and courage. And then I was listening to Tiu, who spoke about the fact that throughout much um, horrible domestic violence, she continued to listen to that still, small, sweet voice, her God, who protected her. And, um, and it's really been a theme through this, this, this day. And I find that fascinating because here I am now at 4.30 p.m. in Alabama, which is where I am. 2.30 out with you guys in Seattle and, of course, all across the globe here. And what I'm speaking about today is how would we know when our dream board and our vision statements might be backfiring on us? And maybe this audience, that's not you because we're all winners here, right? Everybody's on their way. But I'll bet you if you look back in your life, we've all had these moments and <laughs> eras, really, times when it's like, wow, I... Um, I have this vision, but it seems so far away. And we've heard conversations around self-sabotage and this, but I think I might be able to bring some clarity as to how to manage that vision statement and how to know if in mm -hmm. fact it might be backfiring on us. So I am the president of the Body Mind Blueprint. And what I do is I help very strong, stubborn, <laughs> but stuck women learn the sign language of their body so they can really understand and reveal why they're feeling the way they do and how hidden imbalances might be keeping them from expressing the gentle warrior that they are. And maybe some of you have been in that spot and you ask yourself, well, I'm not stubborn or you say, I'm not stubborn. Well, I'm, I'm stubborn. But what I mean in this scenario about stubborn and ask yourself if this might be you. And that is um, children, your spouse, your coworkers, your employees, friends. But when it comes to you, there's this dialogue that's going on, which is, I know better. I should have known better. I should have known better. And that seems to be a theme behind the clients that I work with. I have worked with clients for 30 years. And for 22 of those years, I think I was, uh, you know, 90% health and 10% everything else in terms of, you know, our emotions and so on and so forth, our soul. But there were a few things that occurred over the last nearly decade that kind of rocked my world. And it was because of that that I um, understood that there are hidden imbalances in the body that are showing up long before lab work that are affecting our emotions and even our ability to manifest, unbeknownst to us. In fact, wouldn't you agree this is 
probably why 95% of all health dollars are spent after we get sick. Because what I'm going to talk to you about today is exactly that. These little imbalances that are not yet showing up in blood work. And when they finally do show up, then you have a diagnosis. So how many times do you have a friend or yourself or a sister who just, something doesn't feel right. And you go to the doctor and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling really tired or my hands are feeling kind of weird and tingly or whatever it would be. And the doctor does the lab work and it's like, well, no, you're fine. And you're left to go home and be on your own, your own devices. And that's actually what happened to me. It's funny, you know, whenever I've done, I've known Bettina 20 years, I've done summits with Bettina for over a decade. And always I've spoken about my experience getting an autoimmune disease, taking medication, getting pregnant today. I'm not even, that is not even what it's about because that was a long time ago. That was 32 years ago. But there are several things that happened that brought me to here, to this point where I'm going to share with you about your dream boards and your vision statements and how to have the kind of clarity that you will manifest it. It isn't just uh, this, this little hope. And it really, uh, I'm going to start backwards. And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, I've been traveling the world. I'm speaking about the immune system and, and various things. And, um, but something happened uh, close to a decade ago when I am, you know, I was, in fact, I was working with Patrick Snow. I, I recently, I had published, I was publishing three books. I was completing a degree. I was doing all these things, right? And around about April of this particular year, there was little things I just didn't feel right. Uh, I'd be sitting at my desk and I just kind of felt like my hands felt weak. Just little tiny things, right? And I go to the doctor. No, no, there's nothing. There's nothing. But I didn't feel right. I knew something wasn't right. And, but I told myself, please don't ever do this. I told myself, hold on, Debbie, till September. In September, you can rest. This is April. That is not a smart thing to do, but that's what I did. So anyway, I went through April through September. Something's not exactly right. The last weekend in August, I went to Dallas, Texas. I spoke at a big event. I come home, it's Labor Day weekend. And I tell my friends, my family, my clients, my loved ones, you guys, I'm taking a sabbatical. I'm gonna take like two weeks off and just totally chill. I got my bunny slippers. I got my bonbons. I have funny movies. I'm just gonna veg out and do nothing, right? And that Sunday morning, Uh, Labor Day, that Labor Day weekend, John went to church. My husband went to church. I stayed home. Maybe that was, I was (laughs) punished. I don't know, (laughs) but I stayed home. And uh, while I'm getting ready to put my movies on and to, to, to have me time, my daughter calls me and she had just started nursing school. And while speaking to me, she goes, mom, you you don't sound right. Are you okay? I said, no, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel okay. What's wrong? I said, I'm not quite sure. I feel this pressure in my head. I feel like my heart is kind of racing. I almost even feel like my tongue is swelling, stuff like that. Well, I, all I remember is waking up with my daughter and paramedics in the living room. I was in Seattle and um, uh, they take me to the ER. And uh, after doing a host of tests, they find nothing. Now I was diagnosed with Graves disease way back in the day. So I'm thinking in my head, Miss Researcher, it's gotta be about my thyroid. So I go to see the endocrinologist and uh, blah, 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 no, everything's fine. And so ultimately this experience happened that badly six times in two years, badly enough that I went to an ER, but many, 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 many other times outside of those six. And I was devastated. How can this be happening? to this health coach person. And so I began to dwindle down my clients because like T is talking about and before it's like, you know, that confidence and so on. It's like, wait a minute. And I'm, and I, I have to be authentic. Right. So, so ultimately after seeing a neurologist, cardiologist and endocrinologist at Mayo clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona, who found nothing after those two years, I thought, well, Debbie, you know, 
all along in your life, there's a theme, a story, which is you got to figure it out for yourself. Like when your son was super sick, like when you have this autoimmune disease, so on and so forth. Okay. So I began researching, but I began researching the biochemistry and physiology of what makes the heart go fast and what makes the blood pressure go up and this and that. And I'm doing that and so on and so forth until one day, and this still is extremely difficult for me to say this. So forgive me. But one day I, I finally see that those symptoms were essentially, and you guys are probably like, I already know what it is. I bet you a bunch of you do, but essentially those were the symptoms of a panic attack or an anxiety attack. I'm like, okay. And when I read that, I have to tell you, it, it really kind of broke me because I, um, how can that happen to me? But more, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't happening in my head, but in my body. So in that broken state, I, um, you know what we do sometimes, you kind of crawl up into a fetal position and suck your thumb and <laughs> just start to console yourself. And after a little bit, I, I got, got myself up, put my big girl panties on, shook myself off and said, okay, Debbie, if that's the case, let's figure this out. So I came at it from that angle. Well, what if it is that, then what does that mean? And why is it creating these physical symptoms? Because remember when 95% of all health diagnoses are spent after we get sick, why are we not speaking about the root causes to things? So as I began to search and search one day, I came across a study that blew me away. And it goes to our dream boards and our vision, our vision statements. And so what that was is that there was an animal study. And now I found many since, but I found this animal study that showed that certain mammals, now mind you, we're mammals, dogs, cats, horses, goats, we're mammals. But certain mammals have in their, in their brain, a part of their brain that's hypersensitive to tiny changes in blood chemistry. Now you're like, what, what does that mean? Right. But it, I, it blew me away. I'm thinking, holy crap. What if that's happening to me? What if this anxiety superpower or what if this anxiety uh, panic attack is a superpower, right? What if my brain is sensing something going on in my body again, long before things are showing up in blood work and my brain, my body is sending signals to my brain and my brain is perceiving it, but it, it doesn't, I don't know what it means. I don't know the sign language of my body. So I came at that from that perspective. So then, okay, all right. If it's looking for, and again, this is not science. I want to talk about your, your vision, what might be holding you back. But the point is I began to then look, okay, well then what would be going on in the blood that my body's picking up on? And to, to make a, a very long story, very short, I will give you one example. You know, the blood, our beautiful body, this body that's alive right now until the day we die has a one major goal. And that major goal is to maintain homeostasis balance. But you and I both know that with the crap that we're eating, the toxins we're exposed to, the medications that are antibiotics that are actually in our food, there's a lot coming at us. So this body's working pretty darn hard to maintain this state of homeostasis. So let's look at the blood as an example. The blood in terms of homeostasis always must stay at a specific pH of about 7.35. This is not a science lesson. Don't worry. I'm just using it as an example. But when there's a whole lot of stuff going on, your poor diet, medications, stress, hormones, various things that is the body is wanting to change that the blood, the body has to then go, well, I, I have to keep it at 7.3. So it starts doing other things all behind the scenes, stuff you don't see. Like for example, pulling minerals from your bones to keep that blood pH where it's supposed to be long before osteoporosis and osteopenia show up long before it shows up in your blood work, this is going on. And your little body has systems that is literally talking to the brain. That shocks me that no one's talking about. <laughs> and so 
when the body is talking to the brain, the brain is hearing it. But we who are not aware of the language of our body are interpreting it in whatever way we do, whether it's depression, frustration, anxiety, so on and so forth. So when I saw that and more, there's more, but I thought, well, okay. The Tina, I don't know if you want to mute other people's microphones. I can do that. Thank you. It'll affect you too. So hold on one second. I'm, I think I'm not affected. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to continue. So the point is, is that now uh, in looking at that, I began to then address what that under learn what my body was saying to my brain. Now, here's why this matters as it relates to your dreams, your visions. And I'm going to use the uh, examples of what we're doing here and what we're doing in personal development. So I want you to think about personal development in stages or, or versions. There was personal development 1.0, where, for example, the Zig Ziglar's and so on and so forth, where think and grow rich, you know, if you manage your mind, you're going to be so successful. And that's wonderful. And it's so true. And then there's what I call personal development 2.0. And 2.0 is really the neuro-linguistic programming, the Tony Robbins, the Joe Dispenza's, the book, The Secret, so on and so forth. Abraham Hicks, who I love. And what you're essentially taught is that when you think when you focus on managing your mind and you think this positive thought, your brain literally releases a chemical, a peptide, and that goes out into your bloodstream and your little cells develop receptors for that chemical, that emotion. And then when your cells duplicate and produce their daughter cells and sister cells, then you literally become addicted to abundance to hope, to success, and you are in the walking law of attraction. And then your car breaks down and your check bounces. And you're like, what is going on? And I'm, I mean, I'm doing this managing the mind thing. What is going on? And that's what brings us to personal development 3.0, the body mind blueprint that teaches you the sign language of your body because you are taking these methods, which is to write your plans and your goal statements. And believe me, that, that's fantastic. But if you're not getting there, there might be a reason that you weren't aware of. And so what you're not recognizing is that you might be focusing and managing your mind on a conscious 15 minutes to an hour a day with your meditations, your journaling, your this, your that. But what you're not aware of is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the body's going, help me. Hello, hello, hello. I have a little problems. And guess what? Those signals are literally going to the exact same part of the brain that I talked to you about a moment ago that was identified in this animal study that's hypersensitive to tiny changes in blood chemistry. So the point is, is that here you are trying to consciously spit out these positive thoughts but you're not knowing that you've got this little gremlin that's sabotaging you that all the rest of the time your body, and even during your body's going, uh, no, hello, excuse me. We need it. We need a little help here. A little help. Hello. And that's why it becomes a little difficult. So here's how you might even know that. And this is what happens to my stubborn stuck clients is um, they write their I am statements, which is beautiful. I am great. I am amazing. I'm fit. I'm fabulous. And they write their dream boards and their vision statements. But then when they read them and when they look at them, what's going on is there's this little grip in their gut. And what's really happening on an unconscious level is they're thinking 
and I say thinking, and I'm talking way so deep that it's not even on a conscious level. What's going on is that they're like, I, I hate where I am and I can't wait to go where I want to go. I, they're looking at that goal board. Oh my God, I want to go there, but I, I can't stand where I am and I want to go where I'm going to go. And they're not even understanding that that energy of being so dissatisfied with where they are is actually the greatest of energies. And that is what's emanating. And that's when a dream board or a goal board can backfire. And so then you ask yourself, well, you know, how, how do I change that? Because what you look at that and you might think, well, it's so far away on the conscious level. So I'm gonna go backwards even further. I shared with you what occurred over the last decade but I'm gonna go back to in my early 20s. Here I am diagnosed with Graves disease. I'm married very young, we're very poor. I had a paper route where I drove 97 miles a day. My husband was about 104 miles a day. Then he'd go to work. So we'd get up at three to four in the morning, do our paper route. Babysitter would come over to our house every day, but Saturday, Saturday she had off. Saturdays, I put the baby in the car. John put the baby in the car. We'd take our different routes. Like I'm overweight, I'm out of shape. I've just had a baby. I've been diagnosed with a disease. I'm living in the country in Goochland, Virginia. <laughs> My next door neighbor has an outhouse for real, not a bathroom. Yes, in five years, write your vision statement in five years. And I'm in front of 100,000 people with 13% body fat. And I'm this and that. <laughs> so... I, I laugh, sorry. What happened was, and I am going to fast forward. So Joshua is ill. Morgan is sick. I'm in the country. There's nobody around. And uh, all I was doing every day was researching. And back then you had to go to the medical library. There wasn't no internet and praying every day. And I was listening to that still small, sweet voice. And I let that guide me 100% of the time. All of a sudden, fast forward six years. And I was working in Portland, Oregon. I spent seven years and 10,000 hours researching answers for our children's health and my own. And right at that time, well, actually it was just a little bit before I found all the answers, I should say not all, but the ones that mattered the most at that moment, but it was 1994. So it was about five years later. I am a fitness professional. I'm traveling the country doing workshops. I'm on the Nike elite team. I'm working for Soloflex. And uh, this particular day, I pull up to the River Place Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. So all my little Oregon people know River Place Athletic Club. Back in the day, I was working with Victoria Johnson, look her up. These are the fitness people that I hung with back in the nineties when fitness was, was <laughs> different. But anyway, when it wasn't franchised, but anyway, the point is, is that I get out of my car and uh, I have a 1994, so it's brand new, Acura Integra VTEC two-door white with a racing stripe and a spoiler, tinted windows, right? I get out of my car. There's a valet at the River Place Athletic Club for us. And I'm, I'm not thinking anything. I go to my, the boot. I was trunk. I was born in Scotland. Sorry about that. But I go to the trunk and I pull out my gym bag. I put it on my shoulder. I might be at 12, 13% body fat, muscles rippling, you know, back when you wore those crop top half things, right? And I'm walking into the building and I turn and I look. And I see this young girl looking at me. She's maybe 24. Pock marks all over her face, extremely overweight in a ratty car. And I saw that look as she looked at me, which was, oh my God, I wish I could be her. And I wanted to run over to her and tell her, no, you are that. You're just looking at yourself in the future. And it was really what began teaching 
other people because I know what that feels like. You know, when we were younger, we were raised very poor, stupid thing. This is why I think knowledge is so important. But when I'm high school, you know, and we're, we have no money whatsoever. And I would go to school and the other kids would wear those, this is back in the eighties when they would wear the eyes odd and the, you know, the ducks and the, whatever the heck they're wearing. I shopped at Goodwill. So whatever. But the point is, is that they would be wearing these crisp starched shirts. You know, they look like paper. So I would go to the local Kmart. I don't know if that exists anymore and get buy my little shirt with my money that I made working. And then I would buy the dollar can of spray starch. And I would spend hours spraying that damn shirt to go to school the next day to notice that after 20 minutes, it looked like I had rolled and slept and died in the shirt when my friend's shirts looked like it was just crisp paper. And it wasn't until I was in my twenties when I realized, oh my gosh, they, I didn't know what a dry cleaner was. They had gone to a dry cleaner, but there's something about those moments that have bothered me so that I am convinced that what breaks my heart is that so many people don't know and they don't know what they don't know. And so what happens is that we have these goal boards and these dream boards and these visions and these, these, this, this idea. And all along, we're not even understanding how much we're so dissatisfied with where we are. Wish we could go to where we are. And it's no different than war. It's no different than the Palestines and the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians and the red and the blue you know what happens in those situations and all the situations why it perpetuates? And this is not my original thought here. The reality is in all the situations, those people hate their enemy more than they love their children. They hate their enemy more than they love their children. And I see my clients and you know, 60% of my clients are actually coaches themselves. And in an unconscious level, they hate where they are more than they love who they are. They hate where they are now more than they love who they are at their core, their authentic soul. The degree of dissatisfaction, dis-ease, Frustration, depression, anxiety that one feels represents the degree of the distance from who they are in this reality to who they actually are at their soul and their source and who they are. So at first, I got to a place by accident, kind of like what T.U. said. I didn't have a goal board or a dream board. Early on, I wished and hoped I might get to that spot one day, but my emphasis and my focus during that time was on saving my children and listening to my still, small, sweet voice. And that guided me to a spot where then five years later, all of a sudden I look back and I realize, oh my gosh, I'm at this place that I only dreamed of five years ago. I didn't have a goal board or a vision board or nothing. I was just trying to save my children. Then I go about the world and I write books and I'm speaking. And then something hit me physically. And then when I wrote those vision statements and goal boards, I got that feeling inside because I looked at it and I thought, oh my, that's so far away. But it wasn't that it was just so far away. You know what was really going on? Is deep inside, I didn't trust my own body or my ability to actually achieve it. I also believed that when this body gets so out of balance, it's even more and more difficult to really hear that still small, sweet voice inside. So learning the sign language of your body is what happens, I should say, is that the clients that come, and again, stuck, stubborn, strong women, They've done so much in self-help. They know the mechanics of what they should do. In fact, Simon Sinek, who is a great, great leader, who has a TED Talk 
called the golden circle says that the most successful businesses do not start with how do I do it or what do I do, but why am I doing it? That's great business. People come to me all the time. How do I lose weight? What do I do to resolve my fibromyalgia? And the why is important, but you know what's more important is the who. Like T.U. said just a moment ago, who, who are you? And if you're believing that you are anything less than one who was born as a queen, who has all the abundance for health, wealth, and peace of mind, then you have believed a lie because that's who we are at our source and our core. But we are in this physical body and it kinds of, kinds of affects us a little bit. So here, when these clients that I've worked with and I've witnessed over and over and over again is that they will begin to learn the sign language of the body. And we go through three phases, release, rebuild, refine, to reveal who we are. I do not ask people to write down, give me a goal statement, vision statement for where you are five years from now, or even a year from now, because they've done that. But when they begin to understand and are shown kind of like the doubting Thomas, you know, actually show them in black and white, real stuff. Did you know that 80% of your immune system is actually outside of your body? Meaning the mucous membrane of your eyes and your nose and your lungs and your gut. And that's first like, what? Really? All I hear about immune systems is like vaccines and I don't know, vitamin C. No, that's not exactly the case. 80% is outside here. We as humans were created this way because infinite wisdom understands that on any given day, you, me, Patrick, T, you, Nigel, Bettina are exposed to 10 to the 23rd power of virus on any day. So therefore we were blessed with this mucous membrane that is the first line of defense. No one talks about that, but the way it is created is we are not born with it. It must be cultivated just like crops are cultivated. And the source of its initial seeding seeds like a crop, the source of the initial seeding is from the mother as the baby passes through the birth canal and the bacteria in mom's birth canal mirrors what's in her intestinal area. So if your mama had years of asthmas, allergies, eczema, antibiotics, medications, and so on, her intestinal bacteria is compromised and what she's passing to the next generation is as well. So they start to learn that, then they're like, well, then what happens next? Well, when that begins to happen and no one's educated you about it and you've done nothing to resolve it, so it'd be like walking into a new home and you open the door and the backyard is filled with weeds and this hard soil and crab grass. And that's what some people are born with. <laughs> so what do you do? You go out there and you till the soil, pull the weeds, tend to the ground, put new seed in. Very much like what we would wanna do with our immune system, with this, in, this outside immune system. But if we don't, then, then that intestinal area that is out of balance, because the balance is directed by the quality of the bacteria that we have and the balance of it, then it causes the intestinal wall to be very inflamed. Now you're throwing these inflammatory chemicals into your body, which is resulting in things like depression, dry eye, pains, even blood sugar issues so much more. You didn't know that. You're just thinking, what, why can't I get a handle on my life? Then those two things together, this out of balance intestinal area and this inflammatory process 
Well, then that starts depleting your body of what I call God's antioxidant. The very thing that we have as humans, that we humans, that detoxes us and slows the aging process. The more we have, the healthier we are. It's called glutathione. Then you tack on to that, that these clients had no idea that there's a such thing as inherited fears in my DNA. And once they start to see this and learn how certain things in their bodies, what's going on is as a result of an imbalance that they hadn't addressed, didn't know about, and they address it and correct it. What I see happen to them over and over and over again is this turn, this, this switch where at the beginning, and mind you, successful, strong women, but there is almost like a, a franticness under the surface. I need to do this. I got to do that. I should do this. And then all of a sudden, as they begin to understand, wow, I had no idea that as hard as I've tried, I didn't realize I had all these other variables that were kind of coming against me. And there's such a softening and a compassion for self. The kind of self-forgiveness is pretty uncanny. The results in such an incredible, unconditional love. And all of this is happening. And as they're like walking in the path of the vision statement of the dream board in real time, not hoping and wishing it's gonna happen down the road. So I share with them that when you have that feeling and you see this dream and it feels so far away from you, for you, I want you to also think about a couple of other things. And that is um, all of us, there's an emotional guidance scale. And I credit this to the book, Ask It and Is Given, which was back in the 1990s by Esther Hicks. And has been gone further with regards to emotions, joy, anger, depression, rage, self-pity, fear, that all these emotions have a frequency, joy being the highest. So if you imagine like a gas tank, joy being absolutely full and fear, shame, which is the lowest, lowest being empty, like your gas tank. In between, there's about 23 different emotions. And it's interesting because when you understand that, you can look at a person who on the outside, if you didn't understand, you might say, oh, they're not really improving. They're not really improving, but actually they are. This would be a fun conversation with you because you know, there is maybe shame, then guilt, then rage, then anger, then depression, self-pity. But if you understand the actual emotional guidance scale, even though on the outside looking in, it looks like that person's not making progress, they're actually moving up the emotional guidance scale. And this is what is occurring for those who are learning the sign language of their body. But at the end, releasing is releasing the lies that we've told ourselves and understand belief systems, but also releasing toxins and, and such from our body, but also tying it to what is the emotion I'm feeling. And, you know, clients that were, um, you know, that have gone to multiple psychiatrists for depression. And it's like, wow, I had, are you serious? I've been doing this, 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 and that, but it's, it's so much is going on about my body. And if I make these corrections and these changes and heal this, then I, I don't have that anymore. So when you look at your dream board and your vision statement, ask yourself if when you do, there is just a joy and an anticipation, which is awesome and amazing, or if there's a little bit of apprehension to it. Because at the end of the day, what this boils down to is faith. And if you wondered what is faith, and we can define it in many different ways, it is trust. And it's interesting because 
and I'll use, I'll use my daughter as an, as a example with her permission. Um, two children, look at your own children. How many of you know people whose children deal with anxiety or depression or issues with authority, addictions, and so many things? Think about all that. So two children, first child was when I'm working multiple jobs and I'm not taking care of this child, this child's at a babysitter. Could I afford a fancy daycare? No. Was a child sent to a, a person's home that was maybe babysitting 12 or other children? Yeah. Second child, sick, on my body in a papoose backpack for three years. Meaning when that child cried out, I knew what every whimper meant. I knew if there was a little hair around his finger or if his sock was wrinkled or he was hungry, I knew what every whimper meant. Fast forward, you have these two children. One child absolutely distrusts authority. I saw this for the first time when I'm pregnant with my son, she's three years old and I'm standing in the pool and I asked her to jump into my arms and she wouldn't jump in my arms. And I knew even then, wow, she doesn't trust that I'll catch her. As time went along, I saw to you that she did not trust authority, which means she didn't trust when her mom and dad say, you know, I don't think it's a good idea you go out tonight. It's not safe tonight or this or that. Doesn't trust. Why does she not trust authority and her parents? Because she didn't trust her own ability to cry out. What do I mean by that? Imagine this little girl who's in a baby seat you drop her off, a bunch of kids, she's hungry, di di uh, diapers dirty, whatever around her finger. But the point is, is that she, they cry out and there isn't a response. And in that way deep in that psyche and that unconscious is not trusting your own ability to cry out. Because what is trust? Trust is knowing that when you step into the unknown, that you will either be carried or you will fly. There's no fear. The other child, immediately every need was met. This little unconscious knew when I cry out, I get answers. My point is, is that there's so much in the individual that is so deep. And we're so quick to judge ourselves as I should have known better. I should be further along. And that's so unfair. So I would love if this has resonated with any of you, that you go over to sign language of your body, give me your name and email and let me let, me let you know when we are starting our next, we call them consortiums. We started the last consortium, December the 2nd, last Thursday. These are people who have come together that are learning their sign language, the sign language of their body, which means we are learning about the physical. We actually do at home. We teach at home tests in addition to addressing what is going on in the emotion, how the physical body is affecting that. But I will give you one little hack before we go, because I have about five more minutes or so. The point is, is that this body is speaking and we have not understood what it's meaning, which is why I teach the sign language of the body. One of the ways that is huge is th this, whether you are in a state of stress or a state of the divine, and how much and where is the balance, right? So what we call that in science and the nervous system is the sympathetic nervous system versus the parasympathetic nervous system. I don't wanna make this complicated, it's super simple. The sympathetic nervous system, we have both and they're designed beautifully. The sympathetic nervous system is the one when we're getting chased by a tiger. It changes our body chemistry so that we can run really fast and, and get away. The parasympathetic is the nurturing and the healing. You're in the Zen, you're in the flow. That's where you want to be when you are creating and you are pursuing this vision and the stream that you have. 
So we call the sympathetic nervous system traditionally this fight or flight, but it's actually one more step, which so many people I see are in, and that's freeze, fight, flight, or freeze, freeze. And it's like, you know what to do, but it's just not getting there. And you try again and you stop and you try again and you fight, fight, or freeze. So here's a really cool hack. If you own an iPhone and an Apple watch, you will have on your iPhone what's called the health app. It's a white icon with a little red heart in it, the health app. Now, again, if you have an iPhone and an Apple watch, so if you go to your health app and you wear the Apple watch, click on that health app. And then at the bottom right, there's a little grid with four squares, which says browse, browse. When you click on that, you'll get this menu, all these things you might not have seen before. You'll see one that says heart rate. When you click on that, It'll take you to also more things, but one of them is called heart rate variability, HRV. Now, heart rate variability is something that until now, in order to know what this was, you'd have to go get an a EKG. And what is it measuring? It's measuring the distance, the space, the time between the beats of your heart. So if your heart beats 60, if you have a heart rate of 60, beats per minute. That does not mean your heart beats every second for those 60 seconds in the minute, unless maybe you have a pacemaker. No, when you inhale and exhale, the beats expand and contract. There's a greater variance between the beats and then it speeds up a little bit and a greater variance and it speeds up throughout that minute. And that difference in those beats is what's called heart rate variability. And what does that mean? The greater and higher the heart rate variability means that your body is in the parasympathetic dominant state. You are in a state of flow. You are more likely to trust your intuition. You are in a space of creativity and healing and Zen and flow but 90% of my clients are absolutely not in that space. And the coolest thing is that all of my clients, for example, we use what's called an Aura ring. Look it up, O-U-R-A, O-U-R-A, an Aura ring. And it is like a computer on your hand that you can see, and this is one of a hundred hacks, but the point is you can see your heart rate variability hour to hour through the day, whereas the Apple Watch and the iPhone just average it over a whole day. So it's interesting because you might look back, it's like, well, last Thursday at work, I, I kind of lost a little, it wasn't a good day. And if you now go back and look at that Apple phone and the heart rate variability part of your health app, you might see, wow, that's weird. My heart rate variability was trending down three days before I had that day. The body was crying out for help. Was this emotional? Was it external stress or was it physical? You'd be surprised how much of it is physical inside the body and the body is saying, hey, I need some help. There are so many tools people, we are not learning. In fact, way back in the day, there used to be um, Louise Hay, and there were authors that started a conversation about what does it mean when I have white spots on my finger and this and that. <laughs> and we've kind of dismissed all of it. And so much of that is buried. And it is about trusting the science. And that's lovely. But I will finish with this. In 2005, I was in, stood on stage. I'm in Australia. I'm across the world. And in my hand, I have a slide. And the slide showed at the time in 2005, pharmaceutical sales were 200.4 billion, $200 billion in 2005. In 1990, it was $44 billion. And at, in that, back in 2005, I said by 2020, our pharmaceutical sales would be at $497 billion given what, what, the, what we're doing. I have this exact talk for you 
with slides that I will give to Bettina Carey if this in any way interests you so you can see more visuals. I just wanted to talk with you today. But in there, I went back and if you look today at our pharmaceutical sales, uh, you can, the latest data you'll get is about 2016, 2017. And you know what? It looked just like a business model. And that's wonderful, that's fantastic, but I'm telling you what we're not learning is the sign language of our body and that our body is talking to us. And when we begin to listen, then we have the ability to, number one, make changes preemptively, which isn't what, isn't that what preventative health is all about? But number two, to recognize and understand, wow, I had no idea how much my body was sent, saying to my mind, hey, I'm in a little bit of trouble and how much that was affecting my ability to manifest. I don't know any other way that's better for empowering yourself than to learn the sign language of your body. And I want to thank you guys. And I want to thank Bettina for having me back again at this amazing summit here. December 8th, 2021. <laughs> Thank you, Bettina. Thank you. Oh, that was wonderful, Debbie. As always, you never disappoint. Brand new topic for us, building upon your sign language of the body. Of course, that was just a great concept. All in all, that can be applied directly. So those watching can just step right into the conversation that just that Debbie just had with us. Go to the it's sign lovely. language of your body and just put in your email and I will get you everything you need to know. Fantastic. Thank you.